I'm Anthony Lehman. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my role here at Cherry Glade as the youth pastor and talk a little bit by starting with some of my background. I grew up in around Greencastle, Pennsylvania, and between there and Chambersburg and Hagerstown. Those were my childhood stomping grounds. And it was actually at Chambersburg where I met my uh, soon-to-be wife in second grade. It took a little longer than uh, um, just meeting her in second grade, but uh, we went to school together at a private faith-based school called Shalom Christian Academy near Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. And it was not until my senior year, the end of my senior year, that I actually got a chance to, or got the courage to uh, ask her if she would consider dating me. Uh, but from there, God had uh, different plans in our lives. Um, you know, after we decided to start a dating relationship, she soon went to, to uh, voluntary service through the YES program and went on to teach in Jamaica at a deaf school. And during that same time, I attended Rosedale Bible College and then went on to work on my college degree as well. And, but it was that connection at Rosedale that brought me here to the community of, of accident. And I met a friend um, by the name of Kenton Bender out at Rosedale. And as, we, as our friendship grew and as over time um, I made connections here, I soon decided to attend uh, Frostburg State University. And whenever I made that decision, I began looking for a place to live. And Kenton put me in touch with some good uh, relatives of his by the name of Harold and Eva Jean Moss. And uh, they became my adopted family uh, very quickly here as I moved up into the area to finish my degree. And then through that process, I was able to um, start attending Cherry Glade. And I remember the first um, or one of my earliest memories of attending Cherry Glade was actually a youth group event. And it took place over on Hare Hollow Road at uh, uh, a young couple's house whose last name was Mass. And uh, they hosted the, the, then the youth group at, that, for the, at their house for that evening. And we had a great time that night. Uh, so the Benders had invited me there and uh, I got to meet a lot of, a lot of the Cherry Glade young people and um, felt at home and felt um, that I was someone who they cared about. And from that experience, we went on to attend here regularly and my wife and I then were brought back together in about, uh, I want to say in 1993, um, the 1990s whenever I would have graduated from high school. In 1993 as I was working on my, finishing up my degree at Frostburg State University. And then we uh, decided to um, fulfill that commitment um, to become married, lifelong. I got to marry the, the woman of my dreams um, in December of 1993. And we moved in to uh, live next to Harold and Eva Jean. And then from there, attended Cherry Glade, became involved with the youth group, started doing Bible studies at the youth group. And then uh, Elmer Most and um, Orrin Bender, the leadership, uh, the church leadership at that time, recognized that um, there was a calling on my life, and they spoke to me about that. And uh, as Anita and I prayed about it, we realized that God was calling us to be uh, youth, calling me to be a youth pastor here at Cherry Glade. And uh, from that time on, I've had the privilege of, of watching the pastoral team grow, um, and had the the sadness of seeing some leave, as uh, Elmer and Orrin have passed on. But I've seen the addition of of Danny and Titus and and Barry. And then being able to work with Barry um, through the many years of his being a senior pastor here and now today with Titus, it's been a real privilege. And little did I know that way back there um, in that first meeting of the Cherry Lane Youth Group on Hare Hollow Road that I would um, see what God had in store for me with our young people here in our community here. As to my role here at Cherry Glade on the leadership team, I am, like I said, the youth pastor. And as the youth pastor, I encourage the spiritual growth of our high school age young people um, through Bible studies and just living life with them uh, through the many activities that we do. I also assist with the youth group uh, leadership in deciding what kind of activities they'll plan uh, for most Friday and Sunday nights, and as well as the many special occasions like summer trips, youth camps, canoe trips, uh, Cooper's Rock, uh, Christmas and Valentine's banquets and many fundraising events. 
but I'm also privileged to begin the journey with many young people um, as they take our New Believers class. And on most Sundays, I have the opportunity to work with them in that instructional class and eventually to assist in their baptism. It's been a real privilege there. And finally, I also assist with uh, Bible quizzing and see the young people from across Garrett and um, Somerset counties come together in a way that uh, uh, spans different uh, churches and uh, see how those young people are excited to hide the Word of God in their hearts and have fun doing it. And it's been a real privilege to do that. Uh, I'm also excited now, 27 after 27 years of um, feeling God's calling in my life to youth, being a youth pastor here, I'm excited to watch my own four children um, begin their spiritual journeys through kids stuff, junior youth, and, and now into the youth group. In the past, uh, some people have talked to me about, has my role changed as a youth pastor over uh, the time that I've been here at Cherry Glade? And the answer to that is definitely yes, when you look about the dynamics of uh, what it's been for Anita and I to um, serve in that capacity. You know, um, in my past, I had the benefit of many people speaking into my life as a young person and the same people you know helping to shape and guide my life under God's hands and that's what I hope to do as a youth pastor here you know to speak the truth God's truth into the lives of our young people you know Anita and I were called to minister this loving truth of God uh, to our young people by what we say and do and when we began working with the youth we were close enough in age to be considered peers now, as we move from peers to being parents, you know, that those dynamics changed a little. And then now more recently, as our hair is starting to turn gray, and as we uh, go through the aging process, we're sometimes referred to as the elderly couple. And, uh, you know, and that has its own changes that come with that as well. But, you know, I hope that um, as we begin entering into this elderly couple stage or the sunset years of our youth ministry, that we can follow the example of those who've gone before us who also have maybe held that title. Specifically, I remember uh, Melvin and Gloria Beitzel often being referred to as, as, as they were sponsors as the elderly couple. And think of the great testimony that they brought through their lives and to their lives today uh, as they've worked with young people and many elders in the church. And they're not, they're, they're one of many sponsors that I pick out. You know, currently we have uh, Kaylin and Stacy, and we have Mitch and Sarah and Sean and Sarah, who as sponsors give a lot of their lives to helping shape the lives of the young people of our church and in our community. But um, that change of dynamic does not change the calling um, that we felt in our lives, um, of the calling of youth ministry to reach out to those who are young and uh, to help shape their lives in a way that uh, will push them closer and further in their relationship with God. You know, we felt the pain of loss um, over the years when some have left the faith that we've seen. And um, we wonder, did we do all that we could? But yet, there's many times, and this is where we try to focus on, is the joy that we've seen of many young people um, who have, whether it's here at Cherry Glade or in other churches, have gone on in the faith and have um, been are being used of God in great ways. And I know there's many who are who are some who are pastors, some who have become camp directors, some who have become worship leaders, you know, some who are working as teachers in the school systems, some who become successful business and community leaders. That we um, can just see how God is at work and how He is faithful, and it's been a real privilege to have that. You know, we saw these daring, dashing young people you know, go on to be used of God in this way and saw them mature and grow in the faith. And uh, one in particular is now a pastor at Cherry Glade. I remember well when Robert was in uh, our youth group with his sister and uh, um, some of the, um, uh, the growth that happened then and definitely through his uh, years beyond that. And now today, uh, to be feeling the call of God as a, as a pastor in our church has been a real blessing for Anita and I to look back on. I am excited about the future of our church because I've seen the faithfulness of God in our past. And it is my hope that the work of God in the church continues to grow in this way, um, even through the remainder of Anita and I's years as youth pastor, but into the church of tomorrow because it's going to be a new unknown, uh, but an unknown that God will be faithful 
uh, because he has been faithful in the past. Some closing thoughts that I'd like to leave with you. Um, I have a verse um, that's framed on my office wall at work that comes from Luke 1, 78 to 79. Through the heartfelt mercies of our God, God's sunrise will break in upon us, shining on those in the darkness, those sitting in the shadow of death, and then showing us the way, one foot at a time, down the path of peace. A lot of promise in that that I hope we can take to heart and uh, follow what God has in store for us and for Jerry Glade as a church. Thank you for the privilege of working with your young people and uh, look forward to um, the years to come.